Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at another component that the Formic library provides, which is the field array component. It is a component that helps with a common scenario, namely dynamic form controls. Generally though, you can say that field array component is meant to help you with common array or list manipulations. Let's understand how this component works with an example. In the last video, we learned how to manage the state of a form field as an array. In our initial values object, we added a property called phone numbers and assigned an array with two empty strings. In the JSX, we had the field component for each of those indexes. So phone numbers of zero and phone numbers of one. Now this is fine to collect two phone numbers from the user. Typically though, collecting multiple phone numbers or multiple addresses is handled through dynamic form controls. What I mean by that is to begin with, we only render one field for the user to enter their phone number. We then give them the option to add or provide more numbers if they wish to. The list of phone numbers would be managed as an array in our form state. So let's see how to implement a dynamic form control to collect the user's phone numbers using the field array component. Let's start with the first step. At the top, import field array from formic. Second step, we need to add a new property to our initial values object. I'm going to call this ph numbers for numbers in short. The value is going to be an array with one empty string. Remember, we start off by asking for just one phone number. So only one value to begin with. For step three, we need to add the JSX. And this is where there is slight complexity. Nothing to worry about though, as we will be breaking this down into further steps to understand what exactly is happening. So step 3.1, let's add the div tag and the label. So after the last form field, div tag, class name is equal to form control. And then we are going to have a label within that list of phone numbers. Next is step 3.2. If you quickly take a look at the previous form fields, after the label, we have the field component. This time though, since we are working with a list of form fields that are dynamic, we will use the field array component. So after the label, field array. To this component, we have to specify the name prop just like the field component. So name is going to be equal to phone numbers or ph numbers. Now this is the property we specified in the initial values object. All right, step 3.3 is where the actual heart of this video is present. To be in control of this dynamic form control, we need to use the render props pattern for this field array component. Now this is similar to the render props pattern that the field component also provides, which we had a look at for the address form field in one of the earlier videos. If the term render props is confusing to you, just think of it as function as children. So in between the opening and closing tags of the field component, we have a function. This function will automatically get some props and then using those props, we will return some JSX. This is what we will do for our field array component as well. Function as children. So in between the opening and closing tags of the field array component, curly braces and then add an arrow function. This function will automatically get some props that we can use in our JSX. Let's call those props as field array props. Now, before we proceed with writing the JSX, 
I want us to inspect and understand the structure of this field array props object. So I'm going to add a log statement console.log field array props field array props and then return a simple div tag for now. So return a div tag that says field array. We can now save the file and head to the browser to understand this field array props. In the console, if I expand the object, you can see that we have a few properties and a lot of functions or methods. There are methods like push, pop, remove, unshift, which seem like common array manipulation operations. We also have the form object, which is basically everything we need to manage the entire form. Now there is a lot in here, so let me narrow down our focus points. For our example, we are interested in just two functions and one property. The two functions are push and remove. Push we will use to add a new phone number and remove we will use to remove an existing phone number. Pretty straightforward. The form property on the other hand, we need to go a few levels deep. If I expand the form object as well, we can see the values property. And here is where we would find the values for our pH numbers fields. We need this particular property to be able to render our JSX. Let's go back to VS Code and do that now. In fact, let me hop between the browser and VS Code to write the next three lines of code. At the moment, we have field array props. If you go back to the browser, I mentioned that we need push and remove functions and the form property. So let's destructure that first. So we are going to extract push, remove and form from the field array props. Next, let's dive deeper into the form object. If I expand the form object, we need the values object. So back in VS Code, we extract values from form. And if we go back to the values object, we need the pH numbers property. So values dot pH numbers, which means we destructure phone numbers from the values object. All right, we now have everything we need to write the JSX. Currently, we are returning this dummy div tag. Let's change that. What we have to do is iterate through this phone numbers array and render a field component for each value in that array. So div tag and within the div tag, curly braces and within the curly braces, phone numbers dot map and the map function takes in an arrow function as its argument. This function receives each item in the array along with its index and has to return JSX. Let's call each item as phone number, call index as index, and it needs to return JSX. For our JSX, we start off with a div tag and specify key is equal to index. Within the div tag, we use the field component. The name prop though, we specify phone numbers along with the index, so ph numbers, and then we access phone numbers at that particular index. Now we have the field component, but what we also need are buttons for the user to add or remove the fields dynamically. So after the field component, we add two buttons. Button, the text is going to be the minus sign, type is equal to button and similarly the second button the text is going to be the plus sign so the first button to remove an entry and the second button to add a new entry the click handlers for these buttons we're going to make use of remove and push functions so on click 
an arrow function and we need to remove at the particular index and on the add button on click is going to be equal to an arrow function where we push a new empty value into the array and that should be it let's save the file and test it out on page load if I scroll to the bottom you can see that we have the form field to accept a phone number I'm not going to worry about the styling for this let's just understand the functionality and the styling is up to you so we have one form field and a plus and a minus button Let's enter some values across the different fields and click on submit. If we take a look at the submitted data, you can see that we have pH numbers, which is an array with one value. That is the value we have entered. Now the user can dynamically add a new field to enter additional phone numbers. So I click on the plus button. It renders a new input with an empty value. I can enter another number, 456. Click on submit. And we see the second value as well. pH numbers is an array with two values. If the user decides to remove that number, they can click on the minus button and the field is removed. Submit again, inspect the data, pH numbers is just one value. This is how you can have dynamic form fields with the field array component. One minor improvement we can do is the prevention of deleting all the phone number fields. If you take a look, I can click on the delete button even if there is just one form field. We can solve this by adding a simple condition. So for the remove button, only if the index is greater than zero, then render it. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see that if there is only one form field, the user is prevented from deleting it. If I, however, add a second one, the user can remove that second field. Now I know that was a lot to process, so let's go over the steps one more time. So back in VS Code, first step, we imported the field array component from Formic. Second step, we add a new initial values property called phone numbers or pH numbers, whose value is an array with one empty string. Third step, we proceed with the JSX. We add the field array component with name equal to pH numbers. We then use the render props pattern with our field array component. This gives us access to properties and methods that will help us with array or list manipulations. For our example, we extract push and remove functions and the form property. From the form property, we extract the values object from which we then extract the phone numbers. We use the phone numbers or pH numbers array to then iterate with the map method and return the JS6 that gets rendered on the screen. We add the field component where the name is equal to phone numbers, but this time it is dynamically indexed. We then add buttons to remove or add a new phone number. When you add a new field, we call the push method pushing an empty value into the phone numbers array. So the map method will now render another field component with an empty string. If you push more elements, the map method will render more field components. In effect, we are basically rendering an array of field components using the field array component. When you click on the minus button, we call the remove method passing in the index. This basically removes the value at that particular index in the phone numbers array. When the field array re-renders, it will render with the deleted value removed from the JSX. That is pretty much the gist of the field array component. Again, if this is slightly difficult to understand, 
watch it a couple of times or revisit this after you've watched the entire series. Once you have the overall picture of Formic, rewatching videos will make much more sense and help you understand in lesser amount of time. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.